JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 26th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's by opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It underperformed the most against uh, Aussie, Kiwi and the Canadian dollar, while it gained the least versus the Swiss franc. The greenback act out, on, uh, act out gains only against uh, NOC and the Japanese yen. Uh, the strengthening of the commodity-linked currencies combined with the relative weakness of the safe haven suggests that market sentiment was upbeat. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major EU indices were a sea, of, uh, a sea of green, perhaps due to the better-than-expected German IFO survey for May. Although the current assessment index has led to 78.9 from 79.4, instead of rising to 80 as the forecast suggested, the expectations index rebounded to 80.1 from 69.4. The forecast was for a rebound to just 75. This has driven the business climate index up to 79.5 from 74.2. The increased optimism among businesses may have been the result of activity in in the Eurozone's growth engine gradually returning to normal levels after weeks of coronavirus-related restrictions. The fact that uh, the German government approved a 9 million euros uh, bailout package for Lufthansa may have also boosted sentiment. Now, with the UK and US markets uh, closed for holidays, the improved uh, risk uh, appetite rolled over to the Asian session today as well. You can see it on the graph here. As uh, China's central bank said it would strengthen economic uh, policy and that it would continue to drive interest rates on loans slower. An announcement from a US firm that it is ready to conduct human trials of its virus vaccine may have also added to the broader uh, optimism, despite the increased tensions between the China and the US. Over the weekend, White House National Security Advisor uh, Robert O'Brien warned uh, over potential sanctions to China if Hong Kong's autonomy was undermined, while China's top, um, top diplomat Wang Yi characterized the U.S. attacks as a smear. Now, with both infected cases and deaths from the coronavirus slowing notably over the weekend, Investors may have preferred to focus more on the potential recovery on economic activity as restrictive measures around the globe continue to ease. Here uh, we have the daily change in uh, both cases and deaths. The blue line is the daily change in deaths. The gray line is the daily change in cases. And you can see that we had decent slowdowns uh, over the weekend as well as uh, yesterday. And uh, this may have uh, helped uh, may have added to the improvement of uh, the broader investor morale. Remember last week we noted that the prospect of more fiscal and monetary stimulus around the globe and the fact that headlines suggest we are closer to a virus drug may allow risk assets to rebound again and this appears to have been the case yesterday. Now, barring any fresh tensions between uh, China and the US, which could uh, risk jeopardize any potential trade accord and thereby result in another round of uh, risk aversion, we would expect investors to continue increasing their risk exposures as the worst in the coronavirus saga appears to be behind us. 
That said, we will remain, we will maintain a degree of caution as uh, on Wednesday the European Commission will discuss uh, again its uh, recovery plan after uh, Austria, Sweden, Denmark and Netherlands opposed uh, to the plan for uh, opposed the plan of uh, a, f a 500 billion euros uh, recovery fund proposed by by France and Germany. Now, if things uh, they are, uh, if things there are still, uh, if things there do not result uh, in uh, common ground, we could see another correction lower in European equities. Now, as for today's events, uh, today the calendar appears uh, very light, with the only data releases worth mentioning being the U.S. Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for May and the nation's new home sales for April. The CMB index is expected to have slid to 85.5 from 86.9, while new home sales are anticipated to have accelerated uh, their slide in April to minus 17% month over month from minus 15.4. As for tonight, during the early Asian morning, Bank of Canada Governor Polos and, and uh, Deputy Governor Wilkins will testify before Parliament's Standing Senate Committee on National Finance. At its uh, latest meeting, the Bank of Canada expanded its QE purchases while the most uh, recent inflation data disappointed. Thus, ahead of, uh, of next week's Bank of Canada gathering, it would be interesting to see whether more stimulus is on the cards. With regards to the rest of the speakers, today we will get to hear from uh, ECB Executive Board member Philip Lane and Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.